Starlink 652 launch coverage. And we will jump back into Fallout 4 and then crawl out through the Fallout, baby. Yeah. All right. Let's get the soundtrack going again. I have Rimworld going for Fallout because the VOD gets nuked otherwise. All right. <clears throat> That's why Moonraker came out in 79. They refused to delay it. Not much of a vapor cone today. Yeah. Bud gets nuked, pun intended. I do wonder why... You wonder why there are two different colored blue for Starship's tiles. Higher temperature, most likely. Did the second stage nozzle stiffener rings not come off anymore? They don't even put them on anymore, Survey Slave. Enough flights proved that, it, yeah, there wouldn't really be a problem. All right, so what we were trying to figure out is a way to input a number into this, but I don't know if we can do that Zero to 63 would be six switches. Yeah. So, Mutter, how would we go about switches with AND gates? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For real, Fallout 4 doesn't have any buttons. I didn't see any, dude. Count in binary. I have the count in binary thing open. I... I, the binary part is not where I'm getting hung up, Bree. Um, early days of EJ stream. KSP shuttle landings to the Martian soundtrack amid Christopher Walken impressions. Well, I'll let you know, Morian, I've never, ever, ever gotten rid of my cowbell. I got a fever, and the only prescription is more. More, not less. I don't want to do less. Gotta have more cowbell, baby. <laughs> can't, can't listen to the Martian soundtrack. That'll nuke the VODs, too, which blows. But hey, what are you gonna do? Why did they never put any ads on space shuttles or rockets? That American flag gets boring after a while, Kappa. Now, first of all, piss off. The American flag never gets boring, Dunpeel. And whatever you say is irrelevant. Second of all, you sure you want that? Are you sure? Are you sure you want that? Because that's not photoshopped. You sure you want that? Are you sure you want that? That's not photoshopped. That's not a photoshopped picture. That rocket launch happened in 2000. Pizza Hut rocket. I'm not, not even kidding. You sure about that? I don't, I've decided I don't want that. Yep. I don't want that at all. Yeah. Yeah. 
Anyway. So, how are we going to do this? And each counter with a switch. What mods are you using? Uh, exclamation point fallout mods in chat. We'll uh, do that. My mods, my moderators, uh, got it for you, Pizza Man. Um, so, how are we gonna get it? I understand inputting it and inputting a number. That's fine. How are we going to get it to count this way? How are we gonna get it to roll over? Like, how does it count this in binary? Because obviously we can make it match. Right? We could have a set of switches, right? And have it match a number in binary, right? Say we plug in 10 with six switch, you know, using six switches, six digits, right? And then obviously it would be just getting the counters to match. How do we meter this? How do we make this thing count in binary? That's really where I'm like, eh. Question is, what's the format of the number we're comparing it to? Well, We could go, we could go, we could, we could have it be a 32 bit in we could do 32 bit integer if we wanted six switches, right? Or we could go 64, 64, 64 bit integers, right? I'm not saying that right, am I? It would have to be seven digits to go all the way to a hundred. We could, but if we were going to do that, we'd probably want 101, right? because it's n plus one on the counters. So we would need to, because, well, actually because zero is, it counts zero. So we would need to minus one. So we need to go zero to 63. So we would need to go. Where's, where's 60? Why isn't 63 on there? Why does it go to 50 from 50 to 64? Seriously, I mean, it. half the world watches a certain launch and rockets become cheaper and cheaper. Would a launch not pay for a portion by doing that? I am not trolling, by the way. SpaceX's in revenue streams are not off ad revenue from a YouTube video. Dumb deal. No. No, it would not. Not even close. I, I hate that picture, by the way.
Ah, there we go. This is much better. Yeah, Mutter, we only need six digits. Yeah, because we have zero to 63, right? Zero to 63 would be 64. Perfect. Because it counts zero as a, as a number, right? Most computers do because straight logic. I get it. So we would only be able to... We would only be able to have it... Uh, yeah, it was just an image search, dude. Are you certain I'm the man for the job, sir? Okay, so let's get the editor open, right? Um, let's go here like this, warehouse. Just get rid of a floor for a second. Hi, could you install the Zombie Walkers mod? No. No, I'm not interested in modding the game any more than I already have. So should we use levers or should we use counters, dudes? Brain's going into overdrive. Ugh. It works off fusion. Until, yeah, no, he'll never run out of fuel. Joe. Uh, here, let me bring everybody up to speed if you if you didn't if you missed before we did the launch coverage. So, we're gonna have assembly lines here, and in order for my assembly line to work right, I need to be able to tell. Say I wanted to make ten guns, all right, and each one of those guns needed ten pieces of steel to manufacture, right? And we have an array of all of our resources, it, just a bunch of hoppers with a bunch of resources in them. There's one that's specifically for steel, right? So if we wanted to do a production run of 10 guns, right? I want to do a production run of 10 guns. Each one takes 10 steel. I have to be able to query the hopper to push out 100 steel, right? 10 guns, 10 steel per. We need 100 steel. All right, so I need to find a way. Basically, I, the, the only thing I could really, the only way I really think about doing this is binary, right? because the, we, we figured out that the counters don't really work how we want them to, right? So, um, I need to use, I was thinking, see if we could figure out a way to use binary to input a number, right? Say I input 100 in binary. I need to find a way to get, so say this, see this laser trip wire? You know, the resources will get delivered out of the hopper and they'll go past this and this will 
send out a pulse signal. Every time something interrupts the signal, it'll send a signal out, right? What, I, what I've been doing is having that signal go to these counter things, right? But with the counter, like if you look at the counter, obviously you have zero through nine, 10 digits, right? I can program the counter to stop at eight or stop at five. If I if I tell it to stop at five, it'll it'll count six. It'll it'll go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then go, right? Or if no, if I tell it five, it'll go zero through four, right? Because it's n minus one, right? But so what you can do, right, is take another counter and you can attach it. But if you put two counters together, there's no way to program it into the double digits. Okay? If I have two counters together, I can't attach a computer to it and tell it to go to 98. It doesn't work like that. The game doesn't the game won't work that way, right? So, I need to find a way to be able to meter it. I need to be able to program a number stored in memory in the game, I want to do this because it's a challenge. And, you know, I, Tessa, it's frankly quite annoying how you're like, well, I don't think you should do that. You just did, you know, just a hint of how hard it's going to be. I know it's going to be difficult. I get it. It's Fallout. It's not, it's not Minecraft or something. All right. I get it. Now, I need to find a way to, to input a number, to input a number, right? Store that number in memory. And then when the counter matches that, shut the hopper, right? Pretty straightforward stuff, but I thought we could just ha ha hook up a counter, right? When the counter counts to 100, boom, done. But you, you know, I could program those counters to flip, right, at a certain thing. But if I attach two counters together and attach the computer to it, I only have one through nine. So if I just leave the counters there and don't t don't try to program them with the terminal in the game, right? They'll just count to a hundred. They'll count to 0 to 99. They'll count to 100. If I attach the computer to two of the counters next to each other and set it to 5, right? It'll count to uh, 40, 49, basically, right? Because it'll it'll think 50, count the zeros in, it'll count to 49, and then it'll tick over, right? Or no, it won't It won't do that. What will it do? It's ex It'll go exponential. It doesn't do what I want it to do, basically. So I have to find a way to store numbers and I have to find a way to meter numbers. I have to get that, that laser trip wire to count. And I don't know how we can get it to count, you know? Yeah, it, it doesn't, it doesn't add them together. It's exponential. It'll work exponentially, which doesn't make any sense. It's five times five. Yep. Yep. Hey Everest. Can you control the amount of items put on the conveyor? Then you could just count the guns following your example. Neb, you can, but I don't want to do that. Unless we want to make specialized factories, guys. Hi, EJ. Did you notice Warhorse's announcement? Warhorse? I don't know what that means ever. Sorry, I'm kind of deep into thought right now. I'm not, I'm not, like... I don't know what you're talking about. So this is from Dead Dove here. What's this? What's this video? This is a four-bit binary calculator.
I've never played a Kingdom Come Deliverance game ever, ever. So, yeah, no, I didn't hear about it because that's not, yeah, Kingdom Come, I've never played that series. Yeah, Grams. Well, that's what I started making. I would like to store it all in a resource depository, and we can request a certain amount of resource and then divert said resource, certain quantities of certain resource to an assembly line. Like, power armor is going to have different needs than a gun, which is going to have different needs than ammo, right? That's why I want to be able to meter it. We got to get it to count. We got to get it to count! Why can't it feel? That's the idea. It's, it is a difficult thing to do with Fallout, the way it's set up, but I think we can do it, and I want to. Can I share thoughts? Go ahead. You share your thoughts by this. Bree, my wife's calling me. She does the software things. You're on stream, what's up? Alright, you might have already figured out why you can't do this, but you can explain to me. If you have two counters, one of them's a tenth digit, one of them's a ones digit, and you count down instead of up, and when you hit zero, everything shuts off. Counters only count up. Ah. That sucks. Yeah. Nah, Grams, I'm I'm good, buddy. Thank you. I'm trying to think if there's a way you can reverse that. Like. We'll figure it out. I'll see what I can do. Think about it. Yeah. Bye bye. Maybe you already thought about it, but can you attach two counters to each other and let the second counter increase in value only when the first sure counter equals nine? Yeah, yeah, you could, Lori, but what if I want it? So, I want to be able to change what the counter does. So, like, say I want, maybe I need 11 bullets, right? or two pieces of power armor. I need to be able to program the counters. That's the tough part. But yeah, what, what you said, I'm pretty sure it could work. Uh, Tessa, that link is butthole. Pretty much, Elfish, yeah.
This is easier to do in stationaries. <laughs> Did you do the same stuff in your last Fallout save? It was all manual. We had no automation at all. You just told it what to make and then sent the resources to the machine and that's it. Do you have to go get resources to build this stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, why do you think I cleared out this settlement? There's not a lot left. I scrapped most of it. Yeah, Joe, go and study, dude. You, I'll have something for you by tomorrow. Flip-flop, electronics. Yeah, that's not doing anything for me. Um, guys, let me uh, let me toy with some things, okay? Can you have three three computers controlling each other? Program the number on two computers, and the third computer counts, shuts it down. Yeah, James, I think. Um, that was over in the YouTube chat, dudes. Hang on.
Which is better, 4 or 76? Um, I like 4 because you can do stuff like this, but... I wish I could sit next to you and draw diagrams to help. Yeah, predominant, but it's probably better if I figure it out myself. Fallout, exclamation point fallout mods in chat blows up. I have all the DLCs too, I think that would be prudent to add. My brain's turning into paste. Okay. 
go to those logic gates again. What I need uh, give me the same thing over here and then I'm gonna need another counter behind it right now how do we tell it did you turn fallout into satisfactory yeah yeah of course so I'm going to need power for off the main tap to that switch. Switch to the counter. Counter to input. Second counter to input. And then give me... Yeah, I just need the light. We'll use the light for debug. Okay. Now, if we set this, obviously this isn't going to do anything. Right? That one rolled over, but the other one didn't. Hey, yes, sir. over here. So how do I... Yeah, this is tough. What were the dimensions on your warehouse? Uh, 5 by 12. 5 by 12 by f 4 stories. The simplest way I can think of to do it is to have timers set to shut things down at 100 rollover. Run set the counters to 100 minus X, where X is the item count you want. <sighs> nah, I likes too many pe too many people. Too many people told me too many different things, and now I'm confused. Like, brain went paste, which means if my brain's turning to paste, that's good because that means we've challenged. I, I have a challenge because I don't understand it. I like that, it's good. That means there's something to learn here. I just gotta figure out what the hell it is. Yeah, so, okay, you... Go at throttle up. okay, got some bad news, boss. Both the advanced logic mods are no longer working, so if you can't do it in stock, you're SOL. I... Oh, that... Yep. Okay, that does not help me 
at all, because I wasn't planning on adding those mods anyway. We, we've been over this, dude. Like, we did we not talk about this? I, I'm... Hey, Berkey, 71 months. How are you? I'm confused. Okay, I gotta recap. I gotta go back. So, we basically could get this thing to... We could only get double counters to expone, to go expone it. Never played a Fallout game but loving the series so far. Oh, yeah, the games are just like the series. It's fantastic. Yeah, they made me want to play it again, Perky. I'm really trying to figure out how to do this, too, by the way. Yeah, I, I get it. I'm going to get up and walk around for a second, guys. I'll be right back one moment. I just got to get some fresh air. I got to re refocus. I'll be right back. Frustration has commenced. Now I'm just... Yeah, too many people are trying to tell me too many different things. And it's not on you guys. You guys are being helpful. It's just on me. <laughs> My brain just... Just popped. Like, it's an overload on information, and now I'm super confused. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> it's just the old ticker. 1988 hardware. It only has so much RAM, you know what I'm saying? Hey, Keith, what's going on, dude? I might just go do more looting runs, think about this tomorrow. In fact, I think that might be a good idea. Ew, not even a Pentium up there. Racer, use Nexus. 
Just use, go to the go, Google Nexus Fallout 4 mods. Just use that. Trust me. The mod store is... Yeah. Leaves a lot to be desired. I gotta thank you to give me that brain training here. I love that, and it made me remember how I love logics and all sorts of things. Yeah, let's go. That's the whole point, you know? We're try. I always try to learn something on stream if you don't know me. Um, and, like, I know logic, right? And I know how logic works, but where I'm really... What's really screwing with me is that some of this stuff doesn't work like that. Like programming the numbers into the computer. Programming the numbers and telling the counters to go to nine, right, with two counters, you know, logically that would give you 89, right? But it doesn't do that. It'll give you 81, right? Because it's exponential. You have, programming it as an exponential counter. And I, I don't think that's intended by Bethesda. I don't think they meant to do it that way, right? So I don't want exponent. I need to be able to get a digit. We need to be able to match digits based off of counting a signal, right? And that means we'd need a we need a binary counter. Right? Which ugh, that's where my brain is going. Ugh. I know I kind of know what I need to do to do that, but I also don't. Like that's going to need a lot of logic gates for even one thing moving through the counter to set the digits right. To set the digits correctly, right? Use Eraser, get a tool called Vortex. Vortex is a mod manager. It makes it really, really easy to do. Like, look at me. I'm an idiot. I figured it out. Yeah, Billy. Yeah, yeah, that's probably good. I usually write stuff down. Yeah, that's usually what I'm, what I'm working on. I'm just... I'm really... So... <clears throat> I think it might be a decent place to start to get this thing to count in binary. That would be that would be a good thing, right? Because then I could have my I could have an input number. We could store it using levers, right? Like that guy was doing in the video, right? That video that we watched here, he was storing, he was making numbers with just lever combinations. If you look over to the left here, see. He was storing it with levers. We could store as levers, right? It would be cool if we could store it as levers and get the levers to output a number like onto uh, the Nixie, like a Nixie uh, thing. But that would be kind of hard to do. Uh, oversized Nixie tube. What's going to make that change numbers? Uh, let's see if that interval switch does it.
you can hook up a terminal and change the settings there too. All right, well, let's see what settings we have for the Nixie then. All right, Marco, let's take a look. Well, okay. So, what, how do you get the Nixie tube to change? Because I can activate it. We can send a signal to it. The terminal didn't do it, though. But you said, Alex, that a laser could make a change. Hold on. All right, who is this a tutorial by Oxhorn? A video on how the oversized Nixie tube works with the Wasteland Workshop ex uh, uh, down downloadable content for Fallout 4. Here are the oversized Nixie tubes, and I originally thought that I had to attach them to a terminal, and then I would program it through a terminal, and it was all that complicated. But they're actually really simple. I'm not sure you can do very much with them, but they do look cool. So all you gotta do is place a Nixie tube. You can find them in miscellaneous electricity, so miscellaneous electricity, and then all the way to the back, you find an oversized Nixie tube, place it, and then you see that connecting prong towards the back? Connect it to a power source, and then it turns on. And then to actually change numbers, you just activate it. Bro! Really? Thanks, man. Holy shit balls. Class, and welcome to another lesson in the No Mod Shop class here on the School Zone. I mentioned in part three of my Let's Build in Far Harbor series that I've been loving the helpful comments that have been rolling in, and there have been okay by Lord Rye Bowie Woodham, which is a mouthful, but okay, I know, I know you're just trying to get that watch time, all right? Please. Do its reset. So, if you actually want to turn it right back off again, 
you have to add another switch after it, and it doesn't cycle itself until the power coming into it shuts on and off. So you have to add another switch before it. So let me show you how I would set this up. Okay, so we're just gonna build it right here, and it's perfect because it's raining here. All right, so uh, I have a generator up in my UFO. Okay, Jesus. So we need a way for it to turn on just for a second and then turn right back off again. So I'm gonna use the delayed off switch. And just to test this out before we start shooting shells off, I'm gonna just grab one of these construction lights. All right, so let's hook this up. So I'm gonna hook that up to here. And then as soon as power starts running, this is gonna start counting. So we, need, we still need to program it. So I'm just gonna skip the power counter for a moment because like I said, I think it's default setting is 10 uh, out of that. And then we're gonna go up to the interval switch. We actually want it to be a little bit more than that. 10 seconds okay so we don't want the firework shell shooting off every 10 seconds so we're going to change this to 10 seconds now i actually timed it with a stopwatch during my test and it does count accurately in real time you know so just remember that the reason it doesn't have a 10 on it is because it's counting zero from zero to one as its first second so it actually is 10 seconds so a 10 second counter on the interval switch times the 10 second counter on the power counter comes out to 100 seconds which is a minute and 40 seconds. And each interval switch or power counter you add will multiply that by a power of 10. So if you wanted more time in between the uh, clear weather shell shooting off. Okay, yep. All right. Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this latest mod roundup. I am your neighborhood friendly Oxhorn, and here I am today with a number of other great settlement building mods. The first on the list today is Tick Tock Clock by Arkanen. What this does is it gives you a bunch of new Nixie tubes that you can use to create your own working clocks. Nixie tubes that you can use to create your own working clocks. So when you open up the workshop, there's a new menu item under power called Tic Tac Clock, and you can put down a whole bunch of really cool things. Is that really it? Is that all you do with those things? All you can do is just go up to them and there's no logic input for this. Like, there's nothing that'll trip that thing. I found the logic. I made a schematic. Can I put it on Discord? I think I found something. Uh, yeah. Or just link it in the chat. Yeah, okay. All right, dead end. Heads up. I hold in. Codsworth. There you go. You can go now. As you wish, sir, I'll be at the homestead. Cheerio.
Permit lasts 60 seconds, let's go. It's really dirty after a 20th flight. I don't have a link, it's on my computer. Okay. Windows Shift S will bring up a screen like this. Highlight it, right? And it'll, it'll put that in your clipboard. Then you go to Paint, Control V. And then save that and then upload it to Imager. You could also just paste it in Discord, yeah. Is this first person workers and resources? More like first person Factorio. But, uh, yeah. Just working. I play with mouse and keyboard eraser all day. Yeah, how do we input those damn numbers, man? <sighs> Test signal, I had it. What did I have, James? Hold on. Well, we have to figure it out, Aquas. Yeah. A little bit long, that's a little strange. It's an airplane engine. What the hell is this thing? Why does the nuke have a horn symbol by it? I... I... I don't know what that means. Yeah, Rem, that's what I was thinking. I 
I... Do I still want to use binary logic? I haven't decided yet. I'm still kind of trying to figure out how we're going to do all this with what we have. We have the counters. Hello, Mr. Dick. Yeah. I don't know what that means, dead crew. I mean, O10, if we were gonna use binary to send this, I'm not sure how we would pulse a signal to get the digits to change. That's where I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know. <sighs> Do you have the conveyors mod? No. I have manufacturing extended. And that's it. I don't know if that counts. I need to meter the amount of resources I send for batches for construction J-Speed. Um, and, yeah, that, yeah. So basically, I want to be able to tell it to produce like 60, uh, 50, 50 bullets, right? And then I need to deliver the right amount of resources for that, you know? I recommend you write down exactly what you want to do. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Basically.
I write the circuit in words, could it be possible? Uh, um, Words isn't helping me, dude, so kinda not about kinda not about it. People are people have been people have been saying words this entire time and it's just you know, all it's doing is screwing with me. Like I'm not I'm not understanding. And that's me. Yeah, it's like that's that's me being stupid. Don't worry about it. I'll get it. So I have this set up here. <clears throat> the hopper's gonna drop. How fast do hoppers drop items? I don't, you can set the interval for the hopper to drop. Katra. You can set the interval with a terminal. break the junk down into materials uh, I have the manufacturing extended mod that will recycle it for you you or you have to do it manually you know you know in the workshop drop it on the ground and scrap it I'm just hooking this all back up.
Give me one second. Why does it... That's a delay off switch. Something like that, Pigeon. Sorry, I'm a little little deep in this to be able to explain it. Give me one second. Okay. OK, 
Okay, that's a, that's good to know. Um, so we can get that thing to just keep counting. It'll just keep counting around the clock, right? How do we get it to count past ten and program the damn thing? How do we get it to do that? A conveyor diverter will count how many items pass through and then change position. A conveyor diverter? Well, that I just need to count what's going by. I don't need to... You know? Yeah, have every time it passes the 10 increment, another counter. But that means we're only working in base 10 creation. What if we need 22 of something, right? That's the problem that I'm having because you can't... I can't hook a bunch of counters together and then hook a terminal to it and tell it to go to 22, right? That's the big problem here. The counter doesn't work. The counter doesn't, you can't program the counter for a two or three digit number. Because if I program, if I have two of them together and I tell it two, right, it'll count to four. It's exponential. If I attach two of these things together and tell it to go to nine, it'll count 81. Seven, uh, uh, If I set it to 7, it'll it'll do 49. If I set it to 8, it'll do 64. I don't know why I blanked on 7 times 7 for a second there, but yeah. Can you set it to base two? Well, O10, that was my, that's where I was kind of thinking, yeah. If I set the counters to zero or one, right? It's either gonna be zero or one, so it's either gonna send out a signal or it isn't, right? How do we get that to count in binary? Seems to be growing well. Seems to be growing well. Here's an example of what you want to do with counters. Okay. All right, Rain. Let's see what you got. Hello, gamers. Today we're going to this take a look from at Mike a game turning off a factory after it produces a certain amount of goods using no mods, no glitching, and we're going to use a memory circuit by Dark Dally, and I'll link that in the description below. All right, let's get into what we're going to need for the build here. From the ball track uh, section, we're going to need a ball track switch. Now this is going to be the one that actually turns everything on and off. We need a low ramp, the one with the poles. And we're also going to need a high ramp, uh, also one with the poles. Well, you don't really need the poles for this Please one. Please don't tell me this melon farmer is using the ball track for input-output sig. Oh, that's oh, no. And, of course, a steel ball. 
you can you see in this? In the form of flooring, we're going to need one of the floors um, that has but, the concrete yeah, base that's, that you can sink into things. And then we're going to need two small floors. No freaking way. And then from the walls, we're going to need a wall that we can sink into things or something else that can support um, the, um, the logic gate here. And from the logic gate, uh, we're going to need one OR gate. From the manufacturing, we're going to need an ammo plant or any other plant for that matter. doesn't matter. We're going to need a conveyor belt, and this is the one uh, without legs. We're going to need an elevated power conveyor belt. And, of course, uh, a, a storage. And we're also going to need a laser trip wire. Now, not the laser switch, but the laser trip wire. Now, I'll go in the menu here, and I'll show you which one. It's all the way down at the end of the conveyor belt section here. Yeah, okay, Rick, we'll see. And there's two of them. We do not want the switch. This one goes on and off with each uh, trip. We want the trip wire, which pulses each time an object passes through it. So we don't want the switch. We do want the trip wire. We'll see, fingers. And we'll also need a uh, diverter. In this case, I'm going to be using a left uh, diverter today. And I'll show you here, there's two of them, a right diverter and a left diverter, and it does not matter which one you use. I mean, it all depends on how you position things on your build. You can look at how I build things here and then make your choice left or right later. But go with the left one for right now. And from the power section, we're going to need a delayed off switch pole. We're going to need a power conduit and possibly a pylon, depending on how you arrange things. And we need one, two, or three power counters. And then in this build, we're gonna, I'm going to use two, which gives us a zero through a hundred uh, count. We're also going to need a terminal to uh, control things. And, uh, of course, a source of power. In this case, uh, it's going to be coming from a pylon and a generator here to get us started with. Obviously, you would want to uh, connect this to your main power grid. Okay, let's assemble the conveyor uh, belt system here. And it's basically going to be laid out pretty much in the order that you see here, uh, st starting from the ammo plant all the way down. And we're going to use this uh, floor here to elevate the plant. So first, let's uh, set out our storage here. This is going to define the alignment of the track. And then to that, we're going to attach our powered conveyor belt. So when we apply power to this, it also supplies power to the storage. Now we're going to need to elevate the factory, and that's what this floor piece is going to be for. And the reason we need to elevate the, uh, the, the factory is we do not want it to snap uh, onto the existing uh, track here because then the power would feed uh, back into it rather than being switched uh, by our uh, memory circuit that we're going to build later. So what you want to do is you want to uh, set this floor piece here um, out a little ways and up so that the output belt is uh, just a little bit higher I could twitch than uh, the, the powered conveyor belt here. So when the items drop out of the ammo plant, they will fall um, neatly onto um, your powered belt here. So let's get this floor uh, floor piece in place here. That's good. And now we're going to need a clean area uh, off to a side with nothing else around it to assemble our plant here. And then we need one small uh, straight conveyor belt here. And then what we're going to do <coughs> is we need to uh, long press the straight belt here and that selects everything attached to it and that's why we uh, assemble that in a clear area. So what we're going to need, need to do is hop onto our conveyor belt and what we want to do is line it up here so that it uh, drops the items out of the factory right onto the belt. We're going to line this up 
just right here. If you don't get it right, you can uh, just simply uh, deselect these and move them off the side. But see how we've got that there, and it, it didn't uh, snap to uh, the existing conveyor belt here, so we don't have a power issue. So now we don't need this floor. We can move it out of the way or store it. And that's basically the, um, the assembled uh, assembly line here. Okay, let's uh, assemble the memory circuit. Um, I've placed a power pylon over here um, near our assembly area because we're going to need power to test this with. And I've placed the two uh, floorboards here next to each other. And I've already placed um, the uh, left converter, uh, diverter, excuse me, on the uh, platform here I'm not uh, so the end sticks out off the edge. And I've assembled our low ramp with our ball track switch. No. And what we're going to do... Dude, there's no... The ball. It's using it's using the ball track as, as a stored a stored integer. Isn't it? Yeah. Is we're going to yeah, okay. bring this over. We're going to long press on that rear track. You want to make sure you get the, the rear track. Not the front track here, but that rear piece back there. That was, That's your key piece. So we're going to bring this over. And we're going to snuggle it in right next uh, to the edge of these floor pieces. And the reason that back floor piece is there is so that if those legs get up on it, this whole thing is going to pop up until you, you know, that you're you're off at an angle here. Yeah, it's but using the ball track. But we want to bring it forward, and we want to sink it into the arm of this servo a little bit so that it stops the, the servo stops the ball at the bottom of the track here. Get this fidgeted right in there. And there we go. See, we've got it fairly parallel with, with the floorboards. Doesn't really matter. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect unless you're, of course, OCD. So now we're going to bring some power off this switch yeah. here, which yeah. I've already connected <laughs> to the, the pylon here. Yeah, yeah, you were right. So we're going to bring a wire off the switch the onto the servo here. And this is purely <laughs> for wrong. testing here. So yeah. we're going to exit workshop mode, flip the switch, and as you can see the arm flips forward, yeah. Yeah. and okay. that will push the ball up the track. So let's go grab the ball here. It's a mechanical computer, dude. We'll drop it in the track. Okay, now when we press the button here, you'll see it roll up the track now. Now the important thing here is that ball needs to pass that junction between the two tracks. Uh, it, it can't stay within the switch piece. It has to get past this junction right here, or sometimes it will not uh, trigger that switch when it rolls back down. Well, yeah. That done. Let's take our ball out of the way. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it's yeah, dude. That's that's mem here, that's core memory right mode. there. That's 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 analog memory, analog RAM. That's that's, that's what it is. Lab. You can store you can store ones and zeros. That's that's how RAM works. So stupid, but it works. Wires. Don't need them anymore. Oh my goodness! And we're gonna Thank set the RAM. switch up on the platform. We'll here. see. We'll see. I want to see it, it all go anywhere together. really, but. Uh, I just found this was a convenient place to put it for this build. It doesn't need to be exact here. We're just putting it on the on the platform here. Now we're going to get rid of this piece. You can scrap it or or store it. Your your choice. We don't need it anymore. So we're going to long press on this front floor piece here, and that selects the whole thing. That's why we're building it out here in the middle of nowhere. And we're going to need to set this whole module down. This is our, our memory module, memory yeah, circuit here. It's and it's going to store <laughs> the state of the machine is what it's going to do. That's so freaking funny. I can't believe that. That actually Since, works. Since uh, Fallout doesn't have a electronic triggered on-off switch that we can, um, we can use, we have to use a, a clutch <laughs> like this thing. Um, Anyway, this, this whole thing was uh, come up with uh, Dark Dally, so uh, hot, head over to his channel and... Uh
Couldn't you... Couldn't you use a counter? You could... If you have a counter set to between between 1 and 0, you could use... It could be either 0 or it could be 1. And if the signal's 1, it's going to output... It's going to output power, right? But once it goes to 1, it'll reset. So it'll only give you a pulse... It'll give you pulsed power. Hmm... Right? How do you read it? Well, you can you can use power on or off, right? And if we put that into a logic switch, right, that'll work. It's what you do with your pulse, yeah. All right, let's uh, check out the build if you want. Because this is getting this is getting the. For. God damn it! I was about to say this is getting the ball rolling. So what we've done is. We've set it over here. We're going to bring power in later. And right now we need to bring this tall ramp in. And the reason we're swapping the ramps out is, one, the feet on this one don't extend down, and two, it's a much higher angle, and uh, it will cause the ball to roll back into place a little bit faster and make this memory circuit uh, operate a little bit faster. Uh, Dark Dally uh, used the, uh, the low ramp, and his operated uh, quite a bit slower. And I found uh, through some experimentation by using the high ramp there that gave the ball a, a little bit of uh, faster return. <laughs> so this is a little less complicated, T-Men. Okay, we need to get our uh, counters now. So we're just back into workshop mode here. We're going to bring these over. Uh, now, let's face these back to where we're going to be standing when we flip that switch. So we get the if we can get here. the counters to output a constant signal, then, then maybe, but I don't know how to do that. And we're going to need the second one here. And of course, you can stack up uh, three or four of these. You notice how that snaps? See, you want it to snap just like that. See, see it snap right there? That means that these are ganged together, and that's very important. Uh, we don't need this floor now. Uh, that can either be scrapped or uh, stored. Okay, let's grab I know about our snap wall. counters working together, Rain. Yeah. With our OR gate on it. Yeah. The reason for the OR gate is so that uh, when we operate the switch, it oh. doesn't uh, tick over yeah. a count on, on yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. the counter. So the OR gate here is isolating the switch from the counter, and that's the reason for that. See? This is what I'm talking about. laid out here. We got our switches here. Okay, last thing up is the trip wire. And that's going to snap onto the top of this uh, powered ramp. And it can go anywhere along here, but I tend to put it a little bit past uh, where that arm is. It just makes the wiring uh, a little bit easier. Scoot off the side, see where, see how I lined it up there, where it's just a little bit to the right of where the arm on the servo is on the the conveyor belt. Well, we're about to, we're about to make we're about to make some not so mechanical computer. All right, let's get this thing wired. First, we're going to start off with uh, some power here. You could use a gate to open here. a circuit um, We've got a generator to a pylon here, all set up. Yeah, let's get rid of this wire. Okay. I want to see this. In we're, in, power. we're invested now. And we're going to fire up the conveyor belt here. Good. And then now we're going to bring power over to the tripwire. And that activates that, as you can see. And we're going to bring power also over to our track switch here. That activates that. So that's powered up now. And we're also going to bring power over to our delay switch here. And now you see that's activated. So now we're going to come out of our laser trip wire over to the right hand counter here. 
you see here. And then now we're going to connect the two counters together. Oh, nice one. Okay. So now those uh, connect together like that. And then out of the counter, we're going to go to the red input of our OR switch, or our, our OR gate here. And then we're going to come out of our switch here to our OR gate. So that's our two inputs to the OR gate. So one is the switch, and one is the counter. And then we're going to come out of our OR gate, and that will feed power to that servo. When this tripwire uh, kicks over, power will come along over here and count up on the counters out of the counter and then it will feed into the OR gate and then out of the OR gate to the uh, servo here so it'll activate that way and then also if you press the switch that will feed uh, into the OR gate and then also um, trigger the servo so we got our track in place here now we need to come out of that switch and feed power up to our plant Let's see, I'm probably going to need a pylon. Let's see if we can get her. To oh, shoot. Yeah, I've done that. I've made that mistake like 40, 50 times today. Let's see. Uh, no, we're not going to get a clear path. And you can't put anything on these concrete walls. Wish you could. Let's see. Nope. I don't think we're going to use this. Nope, we need a pylon, I think. Switch. We're going to need a clear path from that ball switch. Let's connect to the output of that ball switch. <laughs> and this is going to feed power ultimately up to the plant, the factory. Be it, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's ammo or weapons or whatever. What was that output? It? Hold on. Or ultimately up to the plant, the factory. Be it, uh, it doesn't matter whether if it's that was out for the ball switch, okay. Weapons or whatever. <laughs> ball switch. Stretch this over here so make sure we get a clear path up there to the top. Okay, now let's bring a wire from here up to the ammunition plant. That, <coughs> that should do it. Okay, let's do a test run here. You see we have nothing in the storage. Nothing in the ammo plant. Oh, I set up um, a set of lights here just uh, for a visual representation so we can see um, when power is being fed to the plant here. You don't, you don't need those, this is just for demonstration. Let's see, when we press the switch here. You see we lights in the background. So that's telling us the um, ammo plant here is getting power. And that switch is green. That means there's power. Oh, see how that elevated track uh, shoots that ball back down a little bit quicker? Yeah, yeah, the ball's being, yeah, okay. All right, so you can stall ones and zeros. And I'll show you the, um, the tripwire operation. See, it's red. When we get an object near it, or crosses through it, it turns green. And each one of these cycles will count on these counters over here, one count. So we had a 1-0, and one more time, that'll set it to 1-1. One, one. I have these set uh, for 1 in the terminal over there. So one more count, and it will shut the machine off. So that would simulate a box of ammo going by. You see it turned everything off for us. Drop this ball here. And reset back to zero, zero here. So let's go grab some materials here. And yes, for the observant, those are a lot of materials. This is a game in which I duped uh, mats, and it's my test world to build and test in. It's not one I, I use for achievements don't need this, these mini mats. OK, 
Okay, in here. <coughs> go down to the counter control here. And these numbers are going to be very misleading. Um, the counts that it's going to count is 1 plus whatever number you see on the screen. So if you select 1, it's actually going to make two pulses And count. plus 1, yep. We knew that. If you set it for 9, it's actually going to make 10. I just set it to 1 again. I'll have to reset it again, I think. So let's go into um, the ammunition plant. And we'll set up for 10 millimeter rounds. Doesn't matter print anything. I mean, this could be armor plant, could be weapon plant, whatever. Doesn't matter. The system works on any of the factories. Okay, so now we, it knows what to make. And so we have nothing in here. Now, since I accidentally set these to one again, they're going to need to reset once. So we're going to start the machine, and the first see it's starting to print the ammo and it's the first box across this line is going to reset those counters again because I made a mistake I shouldn't have set it to one again I should have backed out so there it's triggered shut the machine off so they're still they're reset to zero now so it's everything's all good oh, wait I want to empty that out first This is set to a meaningful number. So remember, this is 1 plus this number, so 2. Plus 1 is 3, and we've got two counters, so that's 3 times 3. So this is going to print 9 boxes of ammo, because each one of those counters counts 3. So it's going to be three times three, so nine rounds, or nine uh, boxes of, of ammo. So there's our first one. I have expect it's going to be the, of whatever each each counter that you select adds a multiplication of that number to it. Yeah, the, the, the stringing counters together uh, is multiplication. Off. But if you attach them and you don't program them, it's addition, which is... I'm sure that's useful somehow. Now, if we look in here, we got nine boxes, ten rounds apiece, so that's 90 rounds that it, uh, that it printed. Five, so five plus one six, six times six, thirty-six. So it's going to print thirty-six boxes of ammo. And don't worry, I'm not going to make you sit through and watch thirty-six boxes of ammo. I wouldn't do that to you, honestly. <laughs> this guy's cool. Okay, here we go. Start it up. I'll, uh, I'll run the first few boxes here, and then I'll do a. A cut on the video here, and uh, we'll come back after it gets uh, close to the end. Okay, here we are, close to the end. Here we got a. Five, four, and there. Remember, these are set for five in the terminal, which means each one's going to count six counts. I mean, Rain, this is definitely one helpful more. for sure. And that will be our six, six. Yeah, this guy's got some balls. Yeah, that's right. And they will reset and turn the machine off. Bada bing, bada boom, baby. Bada bing. Hey. As you, you can see, it shut off, and we have. 36 boxes, 10 rounds each, 360 rounds. Hmm. 
That's definitely a thing. I'm just trying to figure out how we can apply that. That was super useful. That guy was awesome. Uh, Rain, if you just link it up again in chat so people can click on it and go watch that guy's videos, hopefully we can make him some money. So that's, st I still have the exponential counter problem, all right? Because he's just trying to meter what's coming out of a factory. I'm trying to meter resources into a factory. And because I'm trying to meter into a factory, right? I have to be able to configure any type of number, right? There's gotta be another way to do this. So storing the ball, having the ball be stored in memory is actually super useful. What do you mean exponential counting? For whatever reason, you string two of these together and then have the terminal set it at nine. That's gonna do a hundred. Yeah. It's n plus one squared. memory storing the ingredients for each project product you want to make yeah no Simon yeah you can't do that yeah I need to find a way to program any number into the counter so we can requisition any type of resources depending on what we need that's the hard part and, yeah, uh, there's got to be a way to do it. I know there's a way to do it. I just got to figure out how to do it. I just got to figure out what it is. Yeah, I don't, the ball and track is a good way to store ones and zeros, but you should be able to do that with the logic gates, I'm pretty sure. You set your counter to go to 99. You attach the 10-digit counter to another counter. That you set... That you attach the 10-digit counter to another counter that you set it the 10-digit you desire. Like 3 for 36. You connect this counter to a logic switch that will connect to another laser that will trigger your last counter. Set to the last digit you want. Six here for 36. Yeah. Yeah, Liz, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't work too well reading off that. Like, reading it out like that doesn't really make my brain do good things. <laughs> I need to see it, you know? Yo, Diesel, what's up, man? Yeah, make a pinball machine, we could. Mm -hmm. 
So how do we input a time then, Aqualex? that video that relinked about counting. Alright. Let's see. Let's I let's try this. Hold up. You can change a delayed off shift off switches interval via terminal. Ah, that's not a bad idea. Okay. A binary counter is made from D type flip flops configured as divide by two counters because each output is worth twice as much as the previous one and therefore should require twice as many clock pulses to make it go high. These outputs from the binary. Yeah. No, no, no. Not going to bed. Stop it. I mean, Aqualex, that could work. A delay switch. So. Um, Yeah, I understand that part, Liz. Yeah, don't program this one. We gotta pro. We gotta program the second one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This just needs to count, and it needs to match an inputted one that we inputted a number to. That's why I'm thinking a binary counter would work, because that means we could get up to 64, and it's not really that big of an issue. Before the whole, we'd have to reset the system in memory, right? We'd have to reset it. But yeah, I mean, is there any way to reset the counters? So where was that then? Yeah, we'd need to do sequential logic. Holy crap, dude. This is bananas, man. Not not like in Fallout, just I know that's not that's not that's nothing for logic. Like a computer has a bajillion of these stuff like this. Like I get it. It's just crazy that like we figured this out this fast. nuts, dude. It's crazy. JK flip-flop. A binary counter can be constructed from JK flip-flops. JK flip-flops. JK flip-flop is the most versatile basic flip-flops. It has an input following the character of the clock, of a clocked D flip-flop. Uh, 
Oh, shh. <laughs> F- fuck. Oh, this is gonna get complicated, isn't it? The J and K inputs of each flip flop are set to are set to one to produce a toggle at each of the clock input. Okay. What is what is this thing? What's the data line? What what's what's that, Tessa? This this thing that looks like a bell with a thing attached to it. Like these pull the pulse steering circuit and the NAND gates I get, right? What I, I actually I'm failing to understand what Q Q and Q with the line over it is. If J and K are different, then the output Q takes the value of J at the next clock edge. The inputs are labeled J and K in honor of the inventor of the device, Jack Kilby. Q and not Q. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's either on or off. I got it. My flip-flops are left and right. Yeah, these guys are crazy. So JK flip-flop is the most versatile of the basic flip-flops. Flip-flop is a common name given to two-state devices which offer basic memory for sequential logic operations. Flip-flops are heavily used for digital data storage and transfer and are commonly used in banks called registers for the storage of binary numerical data. Okay. Okay. It has the input following character of the clocked D flip-flop, but it has two inputs traditionally labeled J and K. Can I share a screen? A last attempt for a non-binary circuit. Uh, can I share a screen? I, there's no way to do that on stream, Liz. I, I don't understand where you're failing to, uh, like, look. All right, so th on your keyboard, there's a, there's a button. It's next to F12. It's called print screen. If you punch that button and then go into paint and hit control V it'll paste the desktop then you save this right save it right and then you go here imgur imgur make the window smaller drag it from your desktop onto this and then just let it go and then it'll give you a link for the linked picture. That's it. That's all you have to do. Oh, nice, Maverick. See what I'm saying? Just do that, and you're good to go. You don't even need to use paint, just use the window snipping tool. Let's just add another variable, Geek, and make it more complicated. You understand by trying to make it less complicated, you're making it more complicated, right? We, we get this, right? Too much information from everybody. Thanks, man. I'll just figure it out. Don't worry about it, Liz. I'll just figure it out. All good.
Yeah, flute. It's all for a button. We have to persevere for the buttons. <laughs> I don't see the complication, but okay. Oh, believe me. I know you don't. <laughs> believe me. Alright, let's... Store this. So... What would the... See, the NAND gates, I understand. Um, Alright, let's just start here. We'll start with this. We'll start with that. Okay? Alright, let's start with that. Let's just... Let's reduce this to its absolute basic basics. Okay? Get rid of this. Get rid of that. Alright, that's my master power switch. Just put that over there for a second. Input here and input there. Right, and then the outputs. How are the outputs? The outputs are split. So, an output needs to go from there to there, and then from there. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, are we making a calculator? Dude, don't worry about it. I got it. I got this, okay? Alright, so... Um, you know what? We can just connect this to two lights. It's fine. Discovery, go at throttle up. That other symbol, the pulse steering circuit, is X or. No, the very bottom left one, the inverter. Okay. Now, what would D? What would the? What would the D be? 
D stands for data. This flip-flop stores the value that was on the data line. It can be thought of as a basic memory cell. Okay. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. So, the clock pulses, right? Which one, Tessa? Yeah, James, I'll, I'll get it. I just gotta keep, I just gotta sit here and we just gotta grind it out until I figure it out. Like, <laughs> if I can't, if something isn't coming intuitively, I sit here and I brute force it into my freaking head until those synapses are, until those neurons are connected. It works. <laughs> Yeah, the chambers, it's like... <laughs> Hold on, Liz. Yeah, exactly, Garrick. Uh, we'll, we'll get it, we'll get it. So, Tessa, all right. Okay, Tessa, what would the pulse steering circuit be? And what's the... I, I need to know what... What's the data line in this particular example? And what's the clock? Because the clock is a pulsed signal. Wouldn't that be our counter? Or am I wrong? Yeah, for real, Maverick. Neurosynaptic retropropulsion. The clock is a signal to make sure to make everything synchronize in step. So could we use an um No no we don't need to no 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 rain not the delayed power. No 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 we we could, you're right, but there's 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 delayed power and then there's also interval. See? The clock is what is allowing the NAND to tick. Okay, I got that part, weather guy. Now, what are these pulsed steering circuits? What is this? The data line is the counter. I got that part. We're, I got that, okay? So, the clock can be our interval, right? Yeah? These are NAND gates as well. They're the same thing. Okay. Now, what is our inverter here? What is... That has to be the opposite of a NAND. Uh... Because this has to be... When this one is off, that one has to be on. It has to flip it. It flops one to zero. Got it. 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 Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. We're making progress with my stupid caveman brain. We need NAND. This is what we need. We need another set of them right there and right there. And then we need our interval, right? So how many balls do we need? Uh, 350, right? We need that. That's our interval. Okay, so that's the clock. And then we need an inverter, which will also be NAND as well. Okay. Now I need a switch to be able to set our data line. Um, I'll just, we'll just do something that we can. Mm. 
no. Don't use another. I could use another interval, or we could just use a lever. I'll just, I'll just use another lever. Easy. That way we could turn it on and turn it off and turn it on and turn it off. All right, cool. So. All right. These output. So we need one to there, one to there, right? And now that one needs to go there, and then the interval needs to go there and there. Then the lever needs to attach here, and then also attach there. Now lever needs power. And then the delay needs a terminal so I can set the clock pulses, right? And the clock needs to come from master power. Holy shit balls, it freaking works. Oh, that's beautiful. That's it's freaking beautiful, man. It's freaking beautiful. Look at it work. Yes. <laughs> God, it's the most basic freaking thing. And I'm sitting here freaking out. <laughs> yes! Wait. Yeah, no, that... So it works correctly when we have this, right? Hold on.
Power needs to go through. Oh, I got it. 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 Shut up. Shut up. You saw nothing. Skimmy bop. Bop bop. You saw nothing. What am I missing? It's Fallout's power system that's the problem. You make a chart. Uh, no. I get we're are, Cupid, should you sink money into fixing up the slant six on your 85D100 or put a crate motor in it? If you have enough money to put a crate motor in it, you should probably do that. How much do you want to spend on the truck? What do you want to do with it? If I was just cruising around, keep the slant six, whatever. You want to go burn some tire, you want to go recycle some tires, put the crate engine in it.
double check my wiring gym. to go through the flop. What crate engine would I put in it? A 360. You'll be fine. See, when we shut this off, it should turn the other light on, not not pulse the light. We need it to turn the other light on, but... XJ, you were saying he needs to go through flop. What, where where am I going wrong? What I labeled them A, B, C, D, E, and E. Where where am I going wrong? Like, point me. Use the letters to point me in the right direction. If you could put any engine in the world in the truck, what would you put in? Uh, Seven point three. A new 7.3. I don't think it's Bethesda's logic, guys. Not yet. I, I haven't conclusively proven that. You were going to use a counter. I was going to use a counter. Okay. This is what I was doing before. And you guys were like, no, he's doing it wrong. to turn these gates from two input NANDs to three with one always being on. Oh. 
So how would we get around that? How we get around it? There's got to be a way. The lights can be the counters. Counters connected to the logic gates you have there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, hold on a second, James. Um, hold on a second, buddy. Um, to make this easier to see... How would we isolate power and data? How would we do that? How would we do that? How would we do that? Yeah, I, I see it. The data cables, we, we can't isolate data and power cables. I understand that. You can follow it for it's not physically possible. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear you can't do it. I mean, that's... Put a connector on the floor and run a wire from master power. XJ, what do we got here? Okay. Yeah, all right. I think I already did that with that right there. Now, get, let, hold on. Let me get my pulser again. the interval switch, go to miscellaneous, terminal, master power to the terminal, terminal to interval, interval to that input right there.
I mean, that's pretty cool. <laughs> That's right, that's what we wanted to do. But when I flip this up, it shouldn't, it shouldn't alternate back and forth, it should just highlight that thing. Now remove the lower connector from the junction to the lower NAND. I'm working on it, Hibbit. I'm trying to make a binary counter here, or at least Tempting. Junction to the inverter, delete all the others. I am very confused. You changed it back. Okay, let me hook that back up. It, 
Nope. No, I have what's I'm not doing that. Um What are you trying to do? It's a binary counter. Laughable. I need it for reasons for my factory. Hang on. I think I need something to eat. What's the use case for it? Just tuning in here. Just, I'm trying to make a binary clock. Every time the thing, just make a binary clock. The use case, I don't, I, no. I'm not, a, I, it's like I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm not, like, just, I don't want to explain it because I'll just confuse myself. What are you trying to do? Long story short, build a computer. Long story short, computer. That's what I'm trying to do. EJ explained his plan and now is stuck in his own confusion. <laughs> You need link perms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Liz, what do you got? I was going to say, I don't, that looks like what you were trying to explain before.
Link it, XJ. I would assume that, you know, we have A, B, and C, right? So A, B, and C. Hey, Office Wolf. I was gonna say six inch TV, like, wait, what? <laughs> So Liz, I see this. This is what we were talking about before. You're basically just, you just have hard-coded integers here. I, I understand that. That's fair. Um, remove the switch for now. What? What, this switch?
A needs to have constant power, though. A needs to have constant power from here, and then the switch needs to be able to invert the signal. So if I switch this down, it turns that on. Delete the junction between B and C. Wasn't that what I wanted? Hold on. Isn't this what I want? I'm confused. Isn't that what we need to do? You flip it up, one light turns on. You flip it down, the other light turns on. Because... fellas just relax I don't... The hand switch is the laser trigger in this one, James, yeah. Mm -hmm. What did I just tune into? Trying to build computer things.
Hey, Sam Demo. How are you? Yeah, we wanted to make it sound like a clapping robot. Yeah, of course. I guess I'm missing the end goal. Yeah, no, actually, don't worry about it, man. I appreciate it, dude. Just, you know, it's like everything else, dude. How many times have we gone through this in KSP before, man? How many times have we done something like this, you know? It's, it's cool. That's a bonus. Discovery, go and throttle up. Say what you, try what you were doing. We made it divide by zero. <laughs> we, we made it. We made it divide by zero, dudes. Okay, I know about agility. Jeez, it did not like that. I think I made an infinite loop, and I think that's why it exploded. Cause that that was like instant crash, and it was definitely something that I did. What's the end goal again? A counter? I was trying to make a binary counter so I could store a number in memory. So like, say I want, I need 20 pieces of aluminum, right? It's gonna go past and it's gonna go past this trip wire, right? The hopper, we turn the whole system on. Every piece of aluminum is gonna get dropped out of the hopper. It's gonna go past this trip wire. And when this trip wire hits 20, I want it to shut it off. But I need to make that number programmable, right? I need to make the number programmable. I need it to I need to be able to switch it so I could make it like 37 or something or 28 or 2.
Pretty much, Alex. Yep. What stores the number? Well, what I was trying to do is make a binary clock here to store the numbers. But, yeah, I'm trying to make a binary counter. I say hire one of the guys standing out in front of Lowe's to count for you. Yeah, this game's fun. I'm just, we're trying to do things that you wouldn't normally see. You're tearing it apart, Lisa! <laughs> so I was trying to make a binary counter, but I don't... Let's just... I don't even know if this is exactly what we're trying to... Like, I don't know if this is it. Like... Yeah. Hmm. The next ten days will be so long. She's like, it's gonna suck. It's gonna suck. What is the reason why binary? Because I can store numbers with logic. I just... Yeah, I don't know, man. Ooh. 
what are you building? <laughs> Factories, man. Why, what's happening over the next 10 days? I'm going to be gone at the day after tomorrow for a week. Guys, yeah, I'm going on vacation. I'll, uh... I'll be back on the 29th. Yeah, so, and we'll continue our fallout, our fallout addiction then. <laughs> it's going to be tough because I'm going to be sitting here wanting to make this work while I'm on vacation, which is really annoying. <laughs> but hey, it is what it is. It's not a bad problem to have. Oh, boy. I will be streaming tomorrow, yes. Yeah, Ishiku, exactly. On the other side of the... On the other side of this, we'll, uh... The Fallout update will be there, and then we'll play more. Test this and make logic. Test how the gates work. And load up the laptop. You have plenty of flight time. Oh, boy. Okay, Aquilux will try the timer idea. What was the timer idea? Rico with a 40 month resub. Thank you very much.
Yeah, help this ship, yep. Are you gonna play Fallout London? I hadn't planned on it. I think output force is how much, how far it shoots it out, I think. Tough one. Really tough. I got my work cut out for us, but I know there's a way to do it. It just shot it out with more force, dude. That's all. It's all right, Crasher. <sighs> Damn. I just, yeah, this is just really pissing me off. I can't figure this crap out.
Yeah, wave. I'm a stem streamer. I like doing stuff like this. It's hard at this or KSP launch pads. Launch pads thus far. I spent a day doing this, guys. Maybe you trigger the hoppers once per cycle and make one item at a time, or maybe you make some other system to cycle the hoppers again. Yeah, maybe. How much America do you want in one video? Yes. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Cool goalie. Get out of my factory. Yeah, wave. For right now, yes, that's what I'm trying to do. But it, I don't think Fallout understands power and data right. It's, I just need to. I, that's what chat was telling me. I just needed to see it. It does. It doesn't. It. That's not logically working how it should. Wait.
Trunks is this uh, Mike uh, something or other? Uh, Mike, uh, yeah, Ottoman. Yeah, we watched that video already. He's, he uses the ball to store it in memory, dude. That's actually super cool. He's using the ball as a, as a, as, 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 as memory. Yeah, that's cool. There is a counter. Oh, I know about the counter, fellas. It's but the power counters. <laughs> I don't know why that's cool. It's actually super neat. Is there any way to get logic in KSP? Closest thing would be a Cal controller. I actually knew one of the KSP developers was wanted to put um wanted to put logic in the game so we could have programmable Cal controllers and make Uh, like logic and KSP, but no, they didn't decide not to do that. We could get it to alternate, or we could out. We could basically double the output signal if we do that. Now, if you switch a constant power from the counter to the hopper. 
After setting the counter, you can determine how long it will run until it hits zero. I want to see how fast this thing goes. Dude, you got it. Oh yeah? I mean, what we made here is pretty cool. All right, Tessa, what do you got for me? I mean, this thing is actually super cool. We learned about JK flip-flops today. I found a way to power the gates without a signal. working. Copy your link. Go here, paste it. Hey, Survivor Skunks. What the funkin' waggles is going on here? So, wait a minute. So you have XNOR, right? And then you have... Okay. So you have an AND and an AND on top of each other? any mods I have some mods manufacturing extended scrap everything uh, annex the Commonwealth and that's that's a yeah 
I just put four random gates. They're irrelevant. It doesn't matter. I don't. The important bit is connecting two power lines to the XNOR and connecting its output to any gates you want to be enabled without signals. You want that one? That's not what's in your diagram, though. Your diagram has... Yeah, okay, cool. So what's the logic for that thing? Transmit power if one in... If exactly one input has power, okay. Yeah, Tessa, I got it. You're basically... You're splitting up power and data on the NAND. I got it. Yeah, that makes sense. So... Here.
Let me see if I'm understanding this correctly, okay? Don't say nothing. Shh. Okay. No, Tessa, no, don't say nothing. I got it. Don't, don't say anything. Okay? Let me, let me screw with this, alright? that. There it is. Okay. I'm overcomplicating it because I'm adding way too many XORs, right? Don't say yes or no. Do you think your son is okay? I'm sure he's fine. Eh, yeah, Doc, I'm sure he's okay. I'm, I'm freaking busy over here, alright? I told him it's okay. I told Sean I would uh, go out and grab a pack of smokes. I tell I told him I'd be back. It's fine. Yes or no? You're not making this. You're not making this easier. Yeah. Skywalker 1977. Hey, I don't mean to interrupt, but I was watching some other videos by the guy who made the ball thing, and he said spinning is a good trick. I hope that helps. <laughs> All right. That's pretty funny. <laughs> This might be you. That's on me, I set the bar too low. Yeah.
I'm working on it, Rain. We're cooking. Fallout Rust Edition. I don't think that's right. That, that needs to go right there, and that needs to go right there. This needs to go here, that needs to go here. That needs to go there, that output for the inverter needs to go there. This needs to go right there. That needs to go to the switch. Switch down needs to go over there. Move that up just a little bit to the side. That goes there. Interval goes right there. And then we need our constant power. Constant power can just be another switch. Right here. One, two, three, four, five. Constant power to master power. Yeah, it's absolutely worth it. Terminal to interval. Master power to terminal, terminal to interval. Set the interval. On time, set it to one. Off time. Hey, Max. Yeah, all right. I have to pack it in, guys. I have a, we have a meeting. Max actually, actually reminded me. How you doing, buddy? I'm like knee deep in some hard Fallout logic controllers. You need two direct power inputs for the Zor. Uh, just let me finish this and then we'll go. You need two direct power inputs. Okay.
I'm just keeping up with chat. Yeah, she's counting off the interval. Huh. All right, we'll figure this out tomorrow, dudes. Let me just... We'll just do an exit save right here. It'll just, see, it is an exit save if you just quit out. All right, guys, I have a meeting. I will see you guys all. Um, it should be around noontime, but I have some stuff to do in the morning. Again, this week is hectic because tomorrow's the last stream before I take a week. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can figure out this logic. Tessa, you're gonna be around tomorrow, right? So yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll see if we can get it counting. If we can get it counting, then the rest of this should be easy. That this is the hard part. <coughs> There's another one. There's another sneeze coming. Oh, it went away. No, don't do that to me. Oh, that sucks. Okay. All right. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, everybody on the YouTube side of things, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. We'll get this. Tessa, we'll get it. I just got to clean this up again. That was really quick. If I take my time and do it right with a clear head, we'll get it, we'll get it working. And we'll get this binary clock working. We'll be able to store integers and stuff. It'll be a good time. Um, anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. I gotta go. I don't have, I don't have, I don't have time for a raid. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night.